Good morning. Good to be back here and see all of you again. That's great. Dear Father, thank you for your words. Thank you for the life of Mary, Magdalene. Thank you, for God, for the scriptures we have today. And I pray, Lord, you will open our eyes to see wonderful things in your word. That we may be encouraged, that we may be strengthened, that we may be motivated by the power of your spirit to be as you want us to be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So I wasn't here all through last month, um, September, but before then. Each time we came against the June, I have been doing uh, a series on examples of people who walk with God. Okay, people who walk with God. And I have two more messages uh, in that series today and next Sunday. Um, and then I'll be done with that. Okay. Today we're we'll looking at a great woman. We'll just write a bit of a story, Mary Magdalene. Mary Magdalene. And the subtopic I have given to the life of Mary Magdalene is He for the Lord. He for the Lord. He love for the Lord. Um, let me begin this. Way. You probably have heard this, but there are people who sometimes describe their Christian life or their walk with God with words like this. I am a fan, but not a fan. You heard that? Okay. I'm a fan. I'm a fan of Jesus. I'm a fan of the Christian faith. But I'm not a fan. What's the difference between a fan and a fan? Well, a fan is like a supporter of a team, sports club, um, whether it's football, basketball, or any other sport, right? They love their team, they want the team to win, they are committed to the team, but they're not a fanatic. A fanatic is the one who is actually a fanatic. And they do crazy things. Right? Um, the fanatic is the one who will fight for the team. He is team loop. He's in the mood. The way that I do this Christian thing. Or, or you're going to hear someone say, I am spiritual, but not really. Okay, spiritual but nothing. The spiritual thing to work down in me is that, you know, I am committed personally. I have sympathy and I do it my own way. A religious meaning, I follow the crowd. I do what the whole first part was of Jesus do the, the community of faith. They do that thing and sometimes I am not like that. I mean, I'm sure for church, I mean, I'm sure for communion service, but, but I'm not even I'm not even coming to work like this, but I can to watch some things on TV, online, or something like that. The question when we say things like this, is it sometimes an excuse for our own willingness to follow Jesus 100 percent Because the question can be when well, you think like that, what is the benefit of your commitment and the both of Jesus? Final time. Spiritual not belief. What what is that maybe another 
way of staying. I just follow Jesus. You know, I'm going to like 50 50. Or go all the way to 70%. But Eighty or ninety. But what kind of followers of Jesus? One of the followers. You see, from the life of Mary, some of the things we write here and other things we're going to see from other scripture, it is clear. You're going to follow this way. Then you need to have deep in the It was us to a hyper following Jesus. Give us a lot to follow him with just our money, but not our desire, our, our longing. Our hunger, deep, deep hunger in our heart for him. You know? And this is what made her to give up through her own commitment to Jesus. If we're going to follow Jesus well, we must follow him with you. And I ask the question, what is it? What is it? Jesus to keep that? Where we look at Mary? There are two things I see in Mary's life, Mary Magdalene, okay, that helps us understand what it means to follow Jesus. Number one is gratitude, and then number two is devotion. Okay, so gratitude and devotion. We see that in the life of this woman, Mary Magdalene. So first, gratitude. This woman, Mary. Um, we know the first thing is just as the name of Jesus' is mother, but this is a different name. Um, she comes from a city. Uh, Magdalia is the town, actually, a village where she comes from. So, actually, it's Mary of Magdalia. That's why she's called Mary Magdalene. That is the name of the name of our father. But we see a glimpse of who he was. And that gives you a picture of why he was full of gratitude. You have to go to Luke chapter 8 to catch that glimpse of Mary. And let me read that scripture. If you're able to open the that would be great. But Luke chapter 8 verse 1 3. Here's how it works. It says, soon afterward, Jesus went on through cities and villages proclaiming and bringing the good news of the kingdom of God. And the twelve were with him, verse 2. And also, some women who had been healed of evil spirits and infirmity, maybe called Magdalene, from whom he had gone. And to walk by from two Carol's household manager, and Susan and many others who provided for them out of the uh, So what do we see here? That Mary was one of several women who followed Jesus along with his love from place to place, city to city, town to town, as the principal name of the kingdom, they were the only one. And they did not just follow them, but they did that they provided. How of their own means, Jesus didn't give them the money to support the work. They were the ones who provided food, clothing, and Jesus traveled for many why would they that mission? Why would they go to school and do it that way of serving? They are right? pursuing. Jesus healed them from evil spirits. These were women that 
that had been tormented. Through demonic agents. And many of the things seem to have been the worst of them. Because the Bible can be seen by several demons that enter and disrupt the life. He was. A complete mess of a woman because all these evil spirits have taken control of her mind and emotions, and she was full of sicknesses, mental disorder. Story of how Jesus healed her, but we know that Jesus. He was so many people who had one thing. And he brought them to their normal minds. Many was one of them. And when this woman was killed by Jesus, they were so full of gratitude for what Jesus did in their lives. They found him. They had love. For Jesus, and they continue to serve him. You see, unless you have a full understanding of what Jesus has done to you, you're not going to be grateful. Yeah, you're not going to be grateful and live your life. As one who is completely indebted. Because this woman had love and truth from an understanding of what Jesus did. He healed me. He saved me. He delivered me from these ones that were oppressing me. I know what my life looks like in the I know what my life looks like. I know what to be, 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 my failure of the demon? No. It is not a mind. It is the opinion that he had. He experienced him. He experienced his power. He knew his power. And she felt a death of right. Her service with Jesus was not coming from a place of duty. It's not like, oh, you not Mary. Support Jesus, go in his ministry. It wasn't a G. It was coming from the place of Christ. From a lot that had experienced the power of Jesus delivering her from a power who was stronger than She couldn't have delivered herself from the and out of gratitude, she was going to be more about. But gratitude was a person. You know what Jesus has done for you. Oh, you believe that? Because Jesus has done anything for you. If it is one thing to hear the gospel, the gospel is that Jesus gave his life for sinners. He died on the cross for our sins. That is the gospel. 
then Jesus forgives the sinners, those who put their faith in him. You don't need to do any work. You need to just put your faith in him, and you are free of all this. That is the law. It's one thing to hear the law, but it's another thing to experience God. It's another thing to experience the law. And what do we mean by experiencing the law? It is when you, as an individual, take an active step of faith and you ask Jesus to come into your life and be your Lord and your Savior. And God then is forming you. And the opens your eyes and you see that yes, I was a sinner. But now I am a saint. I am not a saint because I have done any good work. I am not a saint because now I have stopped sinning completely in my life and I'm perfect. No, I am not a saint. I am seen by God to be perfect because Christ is in me. Not for me, because I don't have the what the perfection comes with Jesus. And when God looks at me, he sees Jacob. He has taken my sin and he put it on the heart. He has taken the righteousness of Christ and he put it in me. I am now the righteousness of God. That is the understanding that makes us. That was me. Yeah, she does. She would. So to follow Jesus and serve him from a place of Christ. Why? She knew what she was. She knew what Jesus did in her life. You also need to constantly remember what Jesus has done in your life. That experience of freedom from sin. The second thing is the devotion. And, and, and they are connected. Gratitude brings devotion. Gratitude leads to devotion. In the passage we read, it is the resurrection of Jesus. And there's no surprise that Mary was one of the first people that was there. In fact, to see Mary's devotion, she was devoted to Jesus throughout his life as the soul to travel to different place to place. But if you look at chapter 19, verse 25, before we come into chapter 20 of God. So this is John 1925. Mary Magdalene was also there when Jesus was crucified. So talking about someone who was always there, always following Jesus. She was there when he was crucified. She also followed the people who went to bury him. So he saw Jesus die on the and he fought the people who took his body into the tomb and buried him. And he saw the tomb. So think about it. If you were a believer in Jesus, and you saw him die, and you followed his dead body, and something buried, what is supposed to happen to you at this point? Mary was supposed to give up. Mary was supposed to say, Wow, that's it. It's gone. It's done. It's over. There is no reason, no more. But no. So we see that he led a group of women who went and bought and went to the tomb of Jesus first thing Sunday morning 
So they come and Jesus is on your bed. And maybe he gives you the taking the Lord away. Now, he has seen the good dead. But listen to that. He calls him Lord. See that? What do you mean? He owns them. Many still believe that Jesus was not what he believed for. His body wasn't dead, and he thought he was still dead. They took him that water away, so they took him my water away. And so we read this story of John and Peter jumping out of the house and they started running, running forward to the tomb. Uh, Peter was older, so he couldn't run well. Um, John was younger, so he had run Peter, went ahead, got to the tomb, but since he was younger, maybe he was afraid to enter the tomb. So he stood at the entrance. Peter comes, goes right in the And then John follows. And then he saw Peter put him. He stole the clothes that was used to wrap them, but the body wasn't there. And in the Bible says, they believed. They believed what? What they believed wasn't there. But if you see the next line, he says that at this point, they didn't understand that he was be away from the head. So at this point, they were not sure what exactly the body looked like. Now, Look at verse 10. What did he say in verse 10? Verse 10 tells us. Then the disciples went back to their homes. Then the disciples went back to their homes. What do you think that means? It's like, ah, uh, okay, he's not here. Let's go. Right? And and we're back home. Then look at verse 11. This is where you see the deeper. But the Latin begins with the word but, which is contrasting the action of the disciples, Peter and John, and that of the man in the city. He was. Maybe stood outside and did what he did and went. She stood outside and was crying. You see, we see that picture of a woman who loves Jesus so deeply and a woman who would not give up on him. When the others felt confused and decided to go back home, she stood there. They were crying. And then look at the next thing she did. The Bible says she went. And look inside the tomb gate. Inside the tomb gate, there was no funny. And look inside there was no funny. You didn't look at anything. And this time around, there was an angel. And the angel told her, He's not here. And she was still crying now. I don't know if he's not here. This really powerful encounter that maybe had with the resurrection of Jesus. This is the first time that any human being would see Jesus for a feast that we will come. Jesus appeared when he was right behind behind her. He said to her, hey. <laughs> um, no, first he asked, what, what, why did you, why did you? The Bible says she thought this was the garden, right? 
So she was like, I know, I mean, like, please, if you're the one who was taking him, who be where he is and I'll go and get him. And I think what she had no idea what it is. This was a woman who was greedy and confused. Because even if he showed her where he was his bodyguard, you think he could carry him? Anyone who has carried a dead body before, she would stay. She wouldn't have been able to carry the body. And then Jesus had to talk. Mary. It's a thief only the tears on her eyes would drop, right? He opened her eyes and the Bible says she saw him and she knew this was Jesus. So she said in our way, Rabbi, he didn't want to love him. He said, No, I didn't. And she turned out to be the first human being who saw Jesus. And the that he is the first human who is the resurrection She made billions of people who worked all over the world. Mm -hmm. was the, the first. To worship the resurrected Christ because she was the first who saw the why she didn't give up. She hung around. She stood there. The other disciples went back home. This this whole thing was too confusing for them. They didn't they didn't have the time and the patience to hang around. She hung around. I can tell you that following Jesus will have moments of confusion. I continue to struggle with questions about Jesus, about the Christian faith. And that is okay. If you have questions, if you have confusion, that is okay. Because God wants us to wrestle. Like Jacob. Remember Jacob? The man who wrestled with God. And God gave him the name Israel. One who wrestled. It is okay to wrestle with my confusion, with my doubts, with my fears. But not to keep going. Not to keep going. Not to keep going. He will show himself. He will reveal himself. I will come to understand him more and more and more and more. And that's that's a big lesson here that I find with me. That she didn't don't be bold and give up the fear and give up. So how do you go to that? And what I've seen in the past that the time you be both. He always thinks in the own way that show her emotion. What is your deep What do you think you're doing to her? Do you follow her? 50%? Or is it 100%? Are you ashamed of him sometimes? Or are you totally in? I am fully in. And here's a story that for me helps to Capture both gratitude and devotion working together when it comes to showing deep pattern and following someone. And I told you this story. Um, maybe I've told this story here before, but I have. 
It happened to say during the time of slavery, slavery, where people would be brought and sold to slave masters. And there was a slave market, um, it could be called this, with fake audio. Uh, maybe just something like that. You put it in front, and then they would have placed hats in one corner, and slave buyers, slave owners, uh, who wanted to get money, would come into the big hole and just hand it. Um, and they would auction this thing. And then at an auction where you say, $10. Right? Um, go ahead, go ahead. And then someone will say, trade it out, right? Go ahead, go ahead. Someone else will say, pick it out, go. Go ahead, third time, gone. And then we give to the person who had BX in the highest amount of money. And they kept doing that with slave after slave after slave after slave. Starting to make the people were buying and going, some would stay and buy more things because some people came with a lot of money and wanted to buy things. What we came. Then it was the turn of a little girl. They brought her, put her on the food menu. She was looking so weak, hungry, dirty. And they said, two dollars. Nobody was willing to say anything. And one person at the back said, yeah, two dollars. And one man, who was a very rich slave woman, looked at the girl, and something moved in his heart. He was looking at the in love. He didn't know why. He was just in deep love with this little girl. And he didn't want this girl. He was. He thought, he was about. So he said, five dollars. Someone else said, two dollars. He said $10. And at this point, people were like, no, 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 go at $10. It's a school girl, she's not even strong. Someone said $11, the man said $15. Okay. One person said $20. And the man said $30. Now, at this point, people started to feel really deep down. Like, what is he trying to do with her, right? So someone said fifty dollars And at this point, this is like five times worth So you know, this what was this done to her? Um, and the man spent a hundred dollars. No way. no way you're going to put all that money on one little worthless girl. And He didn't even have money and he said, What was $50? And the money said, $100. And the whole place went, Wow. Go in, go in. And that was all the money he came to the place where he wanted to buy 10 homeless slaves. And he took all that money and bought that little dirty worthless girl. And he paid the money to grab her hand and they walked out of the home. He started going. And when they got somewhere in the middle of the road, he turned to the girl and said to her, Little girl, I didn't buy you to make you 
You know what to do. Then the fucking people like she ran to the line and you touched me the third. And he turned. He turned. He wants me to set me free. I can do whatever I want, right? I said, yeah. You can do whatever you want. You can do whatever you want. I want to go. Right there. Thank you. 